Sundoku. About people who buy books not to read. Do you have friends who buy books with zealous enthusiasm? Inhale their aroma. Carefully stroke the spines. But for some reason, with all their love, do not read, leaving them to gather dust on the shelves? Or maybe these people are you. Let's try to find out why some people have such oddities and is it normal? It turns out that there is a Japanese term, sundoku, which is associated with just such an attitude towards books. We turn to him to find answers. Enlightenment versus sundoku. Such a strange attitude towards books quite accurately describes the Japanese term, sundoku. The hieroglyphs of this term literally translate as, laying, and, reading, that is, sundoku means, books that are prepared for future reading, but most likely will not be read. This word was first recorded in the manuscripts of the 16th century, and later in the documents of the Meiji era, which falls at the end of the 19th century. It was then that the modern meaning of the term was formed. In 1879, Tokyo New Magazine published a satire on a professor who buys so many books that he doesn't have time to read them. He is jokingly called Sundoku Sensei. Interestingly, it was in Japan that a term appeared that aptly describes this state of a book lover. Perhaps this was influenced by the rapid development in Japan of the scientific, philosophical, aesthetic, and technical spheres of life. Which occurred due to the country's transition in the second half of the 19th century from an isolated feudal society to an open capitalist society, in which education and progress were valued, and stagnation and unwillingness to develop were condemned. Dot. Even the word, Meiji, itself consists of hieroglyphs, which literally translate as, light, and, rule, that is, enlightened rule. But there are terms, bibliophilia, and, bibliomania, the thoughtful reader will say, Indeed, in Western culture there are such words, and in meaning they are similar to the Japanese version. However, there are also significant differences between them. Sundoku, bibliomania, or bibliophilia. Despite the similarity of concepts, they describe different relationships between a person and a book. For example, bibliophilia means a passion for books with a plus sign, implying love and respect for publications. Bibliomania. In contrast to bibliophilia, means a manic passion for hoarding books, when books already own a person, and not a person owns books. This state is an exaggerated love of books, when bibliophilia turns into a real passion. But bibliomaniacs are also different. It is no coincidence that Kufayev, in his work, focuses on the classification of another researcher, Paul Lacroix. According to Lacroix, there are collectors who collect books just to possess them. There are those who want to satisfy vanity. Others are guided by a feeling of envy. The fourth want only to replenish their collection. In the case of Sundoku, the attitude towards a person is more condescending, because in this situation the buyer, without a manic passion, plans to read a book of interest to him, but, unfortunately, for one reason or another, he cannot do this. Another difference is the reaction of the owner of the books to someone's request to borrow a publication for a while. The bibliophile, proceeding from the absolute love for the book, will gladly share it, thereby helping the book to fulfill its educational function. The bibliomaniac is not able to part with the book, and if he loses it, it will be a real tragedy. With Sundoku, the owner of the pile is neutral about the request to borrow a book and would rather give a copy to a friend to read than refuse, because he himself has not yet reached the reading. There is also a difference in whether these people collect anything else besides books. Bibliophiles are passionate about everything related to books. For a bibliomaniac, it is collecting books that becomes an end in itself, which overshadows all other hobbies and objects. It is interesting that the bibliomaniac collects books and thus loves himself, and loves the more, the more he loves books. With Sundoku, the question of collecting anything else is irrelevant. Since the person who buys the book is only interested in what he wants to read at the particular moment of purchasing it, and no more. Koichiro Shima, author of the book Why You Come Up with Ideas in Bookstores, says that he once heard from his professor about how people who are faced with the state of Sundoku are guided during the purchase. When you hesitate to buy a book because you're worried about whether you can read it all, you miss out on a lot. When you don't buy it, your reading options will disappear and you may never see it again. It turns out that Sundoku is not a purposeful collection of books, 
a person encounters this state without noticing it and not wanting it. This happens not at the time of purchase, but when the books are already standing and gathering dust on the shelves in a long wait for the owner to open them and finally appreciate the content. These three differences already show that the concepts of sundoku, bibliophilia, and bibliomania, despite their general similarity, carry a different semantic load. Should I fight sundoku? The modern attitude to sundoku has changed somewhat since the moment the term was formalized in its modern meaning. Despite the calls of psychologists to clutter up housing and get rid of things, you should not zealously get rid of unread books. Koichiro Shima is sure that stacks of books resting in standby mode have a positive effect on their owner. You could say that the situation where the books you buy accumulates is a mirror of what you want to know and what you want. Even if the stack is located where you can see it and just look at it daily, it can stimulate your intellectual activity. The main thing is to place the books you want to read in a prominent place so that you can really see them every day, then the priming effect will work. In this case, books will act as an irritant, contributing to the stimulation of future activities on an unconscious level, in this case, reading. According to the Ebbinghaus curve, people tend to have an operational process of forgetting. However, if you look at something before you completely forget it, it will leave your memory more slowly. Therefore, the best way to get rid of books in Sundoku is to read them. You should not force yourself to master the entire pile at once, just look at them daily, and the brain itself will tell you when to pick up the right book in your hands. Thank you for watching. Reading is boring so we will be sharing interesting things about world and life with you. Share, like and subscribe, you know what to do. Leave a comment what you are interested in so we can do an episode about it too.